Welcome to the Catfish's Maw. I may be overpowered, but don't worry. I'm shit at this dungeon, so it's going to even out. I'm digging this drive-in baseline. Alright, so as you can see, you lose your beams as soon as you take some damage. They only work when you have full hearts. Yep. As always. You can't be that overpowered. There will be periods where you can see me going after enemies in pots just to get my hearts back to max. Yeah, the good news is it's pretty easy to max your hearts back up in this game. So part of the problem with this dungeon, at least for me going through it, is I get massively lost in every dungeon, pretty much. Mm hmm I especially got lost in this one. It's never really apparent where you need to go. This actually is one of the last places I need to go. Right, so there's an, an event that happens all throughout this dungeon. There's a certain thing you have to do in different rooms, and you have to do them in a certain order, so... This is one of the easier dungeons to kind of get turned around in. Yeah, this is part of it. You can't tell just by looking at it, but there is a signifier that it's the last of those rooms. How much more cryptic can we be? <laughs> this is something that I liked more in the Oracle games, because you had that option to teleport around with the seeds and what have you. With Link's Awakening, it's such a wide-open game, but so achingly linear otherwise. Right. You have so much distance to travel, and not that many ways to get around efficiently. Right, there's only four of those warp points that you can jump around in, and then with Manbo's Mambo, you've got one other thing, but all that does is bring you to the center of the map. Nothing like having all those trees everywhere. It's all learning experiences. It was the fourth Zelda game. Right. Now, they did have a much better fast travel in the third Zelda game, though. The Duck. So this guy is a big old Stalfos. I think he's supposed to talk to us, but he didn't. Yeah, he, he usually taunts you. What happened? I think you actually started fighting him too early. I guess so. So like that all said, we can't really hurt him with just the sword. I can't knock him to bits, but I need the bomb to actually hurt him. And then he just runs away. So you notice that room had just one little block in the corner. Yep, we fight him four times, and that first room I found is the last point. Right, because it's got four blocks. So each room has a number of blocks in the corners, and that's the order you're supposed to do the rooms. There you go. The secret of Catfish is Maw, everybody. Despite it also being a water dungeon, not that much water in it. I mean, there's some, yeah. but... That's kind of the joke. I guess. There's your water! With cheap jeeps. Oh, and I killed him like Goombas. Perfect. This dungeon is actually out in the water, but there's not much water in it. The other dungeon is kind of in a cave behind a waterfall, but there's a lot of water in it. I almost feel like it would make more sense for those two to be reversed. Yeah. Because <laughs> this feels more like a cave dungeon. Ah, that's one way to kill those guys. There you go. Doesn't work on them, though. Nope. So we're seeing a lot of these large gaps that we can't jump across. Just checking our inventory. Everything's still there. Just figuring out what I'm supposed to do. One thing I noticed is, is I end up in the wrong room accidentally a lot. Yeah. So the sad news of Link's Awakening is the level 2 sword does not break pots. 
uh... It's so weird doing these in reverse. Right. Yeah, you did the one with the improvements first. This is a duel for the ages. <laughs> Now, this is one place with an underwater section, but it's just a small path. And I press the wrong button. More Mario enemies. Be careful when you have the Rock's Feather equipped. You can just exit an area on accident. That Goomba's doing nothing. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Lost again. You need an item to make that bridge come to you. And I can't get back there, because any block that I can push is blocked off. Right, so this dungeon has a lot of rooms in it that are divided. Like, they have two different ways to get into them, and you can almost, like, see where you have to go first. It's kind of neat, but it also is... You know, easy to get lost in a dungeon like that. And this is also an area I don't need to be in yet. Curiosity, though. Why aren't you bow and arrowing them back? Because I'm not at the point where... Like, I think there's one arrow pickup in this dungeon, but generally there aren't many until you're at the point of the game where you need the bow. Right. So that's three blocks. I can cross that path if I actually got the dash timing right. Yeah, it's a little hard to do the timing on a one square tile. There you go. There we go. Money's basically meaningless right now, though. And then trying to get back, I use up all of my hearts. Oh, no. So there goes the potion. The red medicine. You could have save quitted. Probably. Or I also could have used Mambo's Mambo. That sends me back to the entrance. Yeah. It has double uses. Nope. Need the item. So not only did we waste time, we lost our red potion. Whatever, health isn't really my problem. That's more why I went with the red tunic. If you're worried about dying, like I said in the last or two videos ago, blue tunic. Now he's talking. You're really annoying, you know that? Ah! <laughs> the red tunic knocking him back into a corner makes this fight really trivial. <laughs> yeah. That room of the same bobbles as the ghost. Here's the other side. There we go. But then I also need to kill the Zol on the other side of the room, but at least I can get over there now. One of those blocks you can only push from one side. There yeah. we go. Now we're beaming. Take three. So he has a shield. Just hitting him normally might get deflected. Generally, the spin attack can break through the shield. It also depends on what angle you're standing at. Yeah. To really guarantee you hit him, you want to kind of stand at his top right corner. Goodbye to that bomb. Not that he's hard to fight, but, you know. Nah. You're killing all his children. Now I get the map? Yeah. We're almost done with the dungeon. I'm pretty sure he could outlast you. He's literally undead. 
<laughs> All he's got to do is not jump down to fight you. So I think I can't hurt him. It's hard to tell. I think I can't hurt him once he's crumbled down. I've actually never seen that happen before. I'm wondering if it's the sword beam that did it. Oh, it must be. I've never seen that happen. But that's the final fight. I usually don't grab the level 2 sword, so I don't have too much experience with the beams. But now we've got the hook shot. Easily the best utility item Zelda has ever created. And it's really good in this game, because it's also a very good weapon. Right. So was it Seasons that had the hookshot? Or am I just thinking? No, it, Season, uh, No, neither one of them had the hookshot. Yeah, Ages had the switch hook. Right. But in that one, you had to get a level 2 before it could cross the entire screen. The hookshot in this does that automatically. Right, there is no long shot. I did like the switch hook. I like the idea, but playing through this and using the hookshot, the hookshot is so much better. Oh, yeah. Seasons was pitiful because it was the magnet gloves. That was its cool things to you gimmick. And that's one of two ways to fight these guys. You can pull out their mask or just jab them in the butt. So much easier to do this dungeon now. Yeah. Also, once you grab the hookshot, you're pretty much free to complete everything. Trading quest, etc. Yeah, you need the hookshot to get to that statue. You can pretty much get anywhere in the game now. There's one other item you need, but... Now you notice I'm leaving rupees behind because I don't need them anymore. Yeah. Who needs money? Yeah. Also, who needs to walk four squares? <laughs> So that is a little funky, using the hookshot to create a bridge. It feels like that wouldn't be very stable. Yeah, any bridge that collapses like that, I don't, I don't know if I'd want to walk on it. You're coming at this from the backwards way. Yeah. Let's do it correctly. So much easier. We'll first that. Wait, let's not make this hard on myself. Right. So I like how in this game the hookshot looks pretty much like a big old ninja star on a string. It doesn't look like the picture. So this bit I'm doing here is optional, at least by this point. We're back at this room. I didn't need to be here before. Mm-hmm. But I do have a key now. We can't have unexplored tiles. Ah, Gomas. So I have options at this point. I can't just use the hookshot against them, but I also have the bow and arrow. Which actually does more damage than the hookshot, I believe, so you're better to use that. And I have a shield, so just use them in tandem. As long as I face the right way. This is just a waiting game. Yeah. I need to wait for them to stand still, because that's a sign they're going to open their eyes. If they jitter like that, they're just going to run forward. And around this point, this guy up front only jitters and runs forward. He doesn't open his eye anymore. This took a while. It's so much scarier in fast motion. The music is a little psycho. <laughs> That's the one guy, he went down fast. Just one heart. Oh, wait. Yeah. It's a dramatic death, and then one heart drops. 
And that's how we get the shortcut from the entrance to the boss area. So, good thing to open up if you think you're going to die on the boss. But ultimately, as you said, completely optional. Yep. And we can use the hookshot to grab onto that statue. This is like the only place in this whole game that uses that. Yeah. You didn't need that ruby, but that was for style. Yeah. When I've got the hook shot and I don't need a walk, why the hell not? So this is kind of a cool boss. This is a boss I did not figure out a decent way through the fight. All right. We got a big tail with a spike ball at the end, and his head is popping out of holes. So. The dungeon item that I got allows me to grab things from a distance. You'd think I would have figured that out. Right. But uh, this bit right here, where I actually did that, that's like five minutes later, I had to cut out a good bit of me going through, like, bombs, arrows. Oh, right, dungeon item, yeah. So we need to pull him out, hit him in the heart. But after a point, he's going to change it up, and that's not actually going to be very viable. At this point. It's like he pulls out a fake bit of his face that squirms around and then explodes. And your best bet when you're pulling him out is to be farther away, because the further you pull him out, the longer you have to hit him. The problem is, after a point, being too far away seems to guarantee I'm only going to get the exploding head. It's like I actually needed to be closer. Uh-oh. Ominous. So that fight took a long time for me. And nearly killed me. So the bosses at this point start to have a little bit more of an ominous message for you. Interesting. I wonder what kind of island this is. Who cares? We've got a marimba. Let's play some Tom Waits. <laughs> yeah. Tom Waits is the only guy I know who routinely uses a marimba. So next time, we're not going to be going directly to the next dungeon, because i got a lot of things I want to do in between, and it ended up being long enough, and the next dungeon taking long enough on its own, that I split them into different parts. We're looking at a miscellanea episode, just kind of cool. I really like the shrine part of this game. There's a cool thing that happens there. We are getting near the end game. That's right. Well, you're, you've just completed the first of the last half of dungeons. And of course, next time we'll be finishing the trading sequence. At which point, we'll be getting another overpowered weapon. Right. I mean, at this point, they're just handing them out like candy. That's what the Oracle games needed more of. Sheer absurdity. Here's a bomb boomerang. A bomberang. Or a boomerang. Also, Dimitri spits out bombs. As opposed to eating them himself. And dying. By that point, that would just be confusing. We need Dimitri in this game.